That's what we wanted to talk about. I know Rob O'Neill, the former Navy SEAL, was on with us last hour. It's exactly what he brought up, fears about Iran. And we're going to expand that, Ambassador Bolton, if it's okay with you um, uh, it, it, right now, and talk about these growing fears about Iran. And we'll bring Pete Higgs into the conversation. He's a U.S. Army uh, veteran. Everybody on Fox uh, knows as well. It's good to see you, Pete. Thanks for coming into yeah, the, thank you. the studio. And as I said, Rob was here last hour, just exactly what Ambassador Bolton said. He said, it's one thing to have this conversation about North Korea. Of course it's scary, but it's another thing to be having the same thing about or the same type of conversation about Iran. Of course. Uh, first of all, everything the ambassador said is 100% is correct. Uh, Iran, Iran is, is, is an example. North Korea is a preview of, it, of what Iran will be. Right. Put yourself in the mind of a dictator or an autocrat. The one lesson you've learned is if you give up your nuclear weapons, you die. What's the example of that? Muammar Gaddafi in Libya. After the Iraq war, when we took down Saddam Hussein's regime, he gave up voluntarily his nuclear weapons program. What happened to him a decade later? The Arab Spring happened. He, we were quick to right. be willing to intervene. He found himself dead in the ditch being knifed by no, his I own know. people. If you are Kim Jong-un, you know that that nuclear weapon and the ability to deliver it is your meal ticket to survival yep. and relevance. The, ter the mullahs in Tehran know the exact same thing, and they have a religious ideology behind them that is absent in, the, in, in North so, Korea. It's that much worse. Diplomacy, we're diplomating our way to nuclear uh, basically blackmail. Right. The, 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 I guess the opposite side of the argument there is that if you do preemptively strike, right, mm -hmm. and I get the ambassador's view on this when it comes to North Korea and, and Iran in just a moment, but I get yours first. If you do strike knowing that, knowing what you just laid out, that the risk as well is that he sneaks one in, right, that the last ditch effort from a Kim Jong-un, knowing that he's going down, is to get a missile out of some mountain somewhere and hit Seoul, South Korea or Tokyo, Japan, and we have hundreds of thousands or even worse dead. No one wants that? But war is hell and requires difficult choices. Does it get better over time? Does it get better in one year, five years, 10 years, 20 years, when they're holding entire cities hostage, and the entire coast hostage? Because now they have 100 nuclear tip missiles. By the way, in fairness to the coast. president, that was his argument in the Tim Russert interview. 20 years ago. Yeah. And what if Bill Clinton had acted in 1994 when it was first presented that they were pursuing nuclear bombs? It doesn't get better. So this White House should be do even more, I would argue, to prepare the American people oh. for the fact that this is, this is going to be messy. We don't, want it. we don't want these casualties. No one does. But you have to do something. Something about it, otherwise you're inviting. How were those situation. conversations, Ambassador Bolton? I mean, maybe not back in the Clinton administration, but in the Bush administration. How did those conversations happen? I'm sure, like again, to just what Pete's talking about. If you make that case, whether it's Donald Trump in the Russert interview or this case that Pete's just making now, how was it received? Well, uh, unfortunately, in the Bush administration, almost from the beginning, the commitment was made to engage in the six-party talks, even right. after we broke out of the agreed framework. So we never really got to the point. It was it was very frustrating. Could I just come back on Iran for a of second? Of course, of course. You know, th this this has uh, has been a threat for nearly 20 years. Uh, North Korea sold Iran its first Scud missiles, both using the same Soviet-era technology. Their objectives were the same back in the 1990s to get delivery systems for nuclear weapons. In fact, in the late 90s, North Korea uh, launched a missile uh, that landed in the Pacific east of Japan, meaning that they could hit Japan quite clearly if they wanted to. Uh, and in response to the furor from Japan, North Korea agreed to a moratorium on launch testing from the Korean Peninsula. Peninsula. Instead, they did all their launch testing in conjunction with the Iranians. And this went right. on uh, for years. And uh, I think the evidence of collusion on the ballistic missile program is unassailable. I think there's collusion on the nuclear program, too. When George W. Bush spoke of an axis of evil, it was not just a metaphor. No, I, the, I want to. I will get both of your opinions on this, and Pete, I'll start with you. What, the rational actor conversation or debate that we've been having this week about Kim Jong-un, what are the differences, um, in your view, between Iran and, and North Korea in terms of who's rational and who's I not? I think they're both fairly rational at some level, but in, in North Korea, it's a survival issue. Yeah. Uh, in, in Iran, you have an ideological commitment. That's, I mean, that's different, right? Very that's a, different. That's a totally different you, you mindset. Have, and, and some will say it's a distortion of a religion. That's fine. The reality is they, 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 they read a book that tells them to do a certain thing. In their mind, right. part of it is an eradication of Israel, which is a stone's throw from Iran. And if they get this weapon, we've heard what dictators have said in the past. 
I'm going to do something if I have the power to do it. So it's more, it's you easier have to deal with. Saying that very same thing in Iran, I will wipe Israel off the map if I have right. the capability. It may not happen tomorrow, but they reserve the right and ability to do so. And in a world where ideology still battles, and the left wants to deny this ideology, pretend like we live in a global community where everyone gets along, that ain't the case. You better be prepared to confront it, and Iran is the worst case scenario. You rather deal then, uh, Ambassador Bolton, with a, as funny as it sounds, I don't like to say it's easy. Easier, but you'd rather deal with someone like Kim Jong Un. Is he more rational and uh, easier to deal with because it's survival and not ideology, as Pete lays out? Well, I think the regime is rational in its terms, but that's not a rationality that we recognize. And, okay. and it's not just Kim Jong Un who's the problem here. It's the whole regime. No, nobody should operate under the belief that if we could just take Kim Jong Un out, somehow uh, the generals would be more. Reasonable, uh, and I think that this is uh, we, we see this reflected now in these threats uh, in the next days to launch missiles against Guam. People right. say the regime doesn't want to commit suicide, but I'm very concerned they have a kind of Hitler in the bunker mentality, and they think really? if they're going to go down, by God, they're going to take as many uh, of the rest of us as they can. They when wouldn't they go. wait for us to strike first. They would. Uh, you think the they would initiate it in Guam? That's how they would. Well, they would start I, I don't. It. You know, honestly, I don't know, and, and yeah, I, I know. find that scary. Uh, yeah. But I think the, the lesson ahead is they would use these nuclear weapons as blackmail, pull all American troops out of Korea and Japan, right. or will nuke Tokyo. That's the kind of threat I think we could face. Just Guam the is not their order. ultimate end state. I mean, right. Guam is a, is a means to, their end state would be a blaze of glory, as, as the ambassador mentioned. If they're going to go down, they're going to go down as big as possible. South Korea. Why they're racing to South Korea or Los Angeles or our mainland or Hawaii. Right. That's why they want the military nuclear weapon that we now know we believe they have based on our intelligence agencies yes. and the ability to deliver it. That's their meal ticket to survival and the worst case scenario for us. All right, thanks guys. Uh, Ambassador Bolton's always good to see you. Thank you, Pete. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate them today.